Well, it's welcome back now uh, to Dr. Nick Andrews, a dentist with immense experience uh, supporting head and neck cancer patients. And we're going to show you some images now of the kind of damage that may be caused by radiation therapy in the longer term uh, to patients. And don't continue to watch if you don't like uh, graphic blunt dental imagery. This is designed for professionals, uh, but of course, patients and family may wish to see it, but some of it may be confronting. So hold in your mind, of course, this does not happen to everybody. Uh, and I'll just begin, if I may, by uh, Nick, by showing a, a picture of my tumour before and after radiation, because uh, I had stage four oropharyngeal cancer, tonsils, tongue and throat treated in 2013 with 33 sessions of radiation and weekly chemo. And you'll see there on the left uh, is an image of uh, all that lumpy stuff is deep down here. And that's cancerous tumours, stage four cancerous tumours. And the photo's taken a little bit of anaesthesia in the nose and then a tube goes down and my surgeon took that photo. Mm -hmm. If you look at the image on the right, that's about a year to 18 months after my radiation treatment. Uh, the burning has healed up. I'm able to speak and swallow and talk again, and you can see it's completely gone. If I could just show you the next image, and that's me being treated, I'm um, laying flat on a, what's called a linear accelerator, a radiation machine, and the radiation machine is firing radiation at the different angles uh, into my tumour to kill it. The mask is a safety mask or immobilisation mask to keep you completely still. And uh, that's the treatment process. And so I'm glad I had this treatment. I'm alive because of it. Um, but we're now going to explore some of the challenges uh, that may follow. Um, can we go to our next slide? And can you explain, Nick, what are we looking at here, please? Thanks, Julie. Um, well, this is the classic textbook picture of an oral squamous cell carcinoma. Um, we talk about five features, ulceration, which you can see that creamy centre there, elevation, the whole thing is raised, uh, fungation, it's all bumpy and, uh, and lumpy there, um, fixation, if you were to feel, to try and move that, it's quite tightly bound to the tissues underneath and induration. So if you put your finger on it, it's quite firm to touch. So those are the five classic features of a, of a malignancy. You'll also note that patient uh, there's only got one remaining tooth, uh, which may be contributing to some of that ulceration. And there's an incredible amount of plaque and calculus on that tooth. And that's a typical classical clinical picture of a head and neck cancer patient, generally an older male, poor dentition, poor general health, chronic abuser of alcohol and tobacco. Um, they're not all as obvious as that. They can present to something as innocuous as a, as a white or red patch in the mouth or even a, an ulcer that fails to heal after two weeks or so. So any suspicious looking lesion ought to be investigated. Um, and so this is why dental surveillance is important and regular mouth care and checkups are important. Try and catch these things early. And just for people for whom this is new, uh, when we talk about head and neck cancers, there are many different types. If you Google head and neck cancer Australia, it's a marvellous professional website that offers a range of information and imagery and anatomical guidelines as to the full range of head and neck cancers. The one I showed you a moment ago was deep down here. It was called an oropharyngeal uh, cancer and it was caused by the human papilloma virus. Let's see the next image and uh, just as it comes up and we're looking here at the kind of external burning that can occur over the weeks as you have your radiation. I I peeled in the manner that uh, you can imagine it was like being burnt and then I peeled and I certainly saw fellow patients who had uh, more rough and dry skin actually break open. I saw them in the waiting room and some of the older country men had to be bandaged up. I'll, I'll let mm. you speak to it, Nick, but I'll just say what I think of when I see this is while I had better dentition, as I've learned to call it, and um, I hadn't smoked or drank, I've still had a lot of dental issues from dry mouth because mm. I still got a lot of collateral damage because getting to the tumour to kill, they, they hit a lot of healthy tissue and this is the external damage. But what would you say? Yeah, 
Yeah, well, this is uh, clinically what we call um, epidermitis caused by the radiation. So radiation, um, it works in basic terms by killing cells that are growing very quickly. So cells that replenish themselves um, are more susceptible to radiation damage. Skin cells turn over quite quickly, as do the cells that lie on the inside of our mouth. So they're quite susceptible to radiation damage. And it presents like a really severe sunburn. In this case, you've got what's called moist desquamation. Uh, the same thing can happen um, internally, as we'll see. Some cells um, which don't turn over very quickly and which are highly specialised are still sort of paradoxically vulnerable to radiation damage. And that's some of the salivary tissue. Uh, and so it's no wonder that saliva glands in the head and neck area um, are going to be affected by high doses of radiation to that region. And that presents a challenge in terms of dry mouth. I will ask um, for the next slide, which shows damage in the mouth caused by radiation. And just before you explain it, if I could say if there are any patients or family watching this, you have a multidisciplinary team, including a speech pathologist and a nurse, as well as your medical team. And we are given pain relief and we are given help with a, a whole range of products so that we don't suffer. I just really want to make that clear. And if you are in treatment looking at this and there is any suffering, talk to your nurse or your doctor or members of your team because there is uh, oral pain relief and there is uh, um, there are uh, products we can use, many of them by a company called Bioteen, that help you cope with this because it is a bit tough to look at. But can you explain what we're looking at now on the side of the tongue here and inside the so mouth? So this is a radiation mucositis, just a breakdown of the lining of the surface of the skin as a result, again, of the, the radiation damage knocking off cells faster than your body can replace them. And it causes this painful ulceration. Um, the good news is there is good pain management available, um, as Julie has just said, and it's a temporary condition. It will usually recover within six to 12 weeks at most for the vast majority of patients. So you've just got to try to get through this initial phase um, and it will get better. Likewise, with the epidermitis we saw previously, you may be left with a little bit of residual discoloration there. Men might find that the beard stops growing in the area where um, they've had the burn. Uh, but apart from that, it's really not very disfiguring long term for most patients. If you're watching this and you're having trouble affording some of the products that are recommended to you, let your nurse and doctor know because uh, quite often cancer teams have um, funds uh, that they can make available to people who are unable uh, to afford some of these products that are really great, but we do tend to pay for them ourselves. And, you know, I look forward to the day when perhaps the pharmaceutical benefits scheme could provide some of these products in the acute and recovery phase uh, for people who have trouble affording them. If we could have our next image, please. And this is trying to convey dry mouth. So you tell it, Nick, I've lived it. Where do you describe it? Well, what I would point to is how dry and what we call atrophic the tongue looks. It's smooth, normally the tongue would be bumpy with the little um, taste buds all over it, but it's smooth, rounded, very dry looking, um, swollen tongue. You can see the corners of the mouth there, there's a redness uh, uh, that's an angular colitis, which is a fungal infection, which is often associated with dry mouth. Generally, you can see how dry the lips look as well. Uh, so this is a classic clinical picture of a, what we call a xerostomic patient or a patient with severe salivary gland hypofunction. Yes, if you see this word xerostomia, it begins with an X, but it sounds like a Z, and uh, that's the flashy word for, for dry mouth. If we could have the next slide, and there's four images. If you could just explain what each is, but I particularly want you to talk about the trismus, if you would. Yeah, so we can see up on the top left there the previous image of the, the dry mouth, the swollen atrophic tongue with the angular colitis or fungal infection, the corner of the mouth. On the top right is an intraoral um, photograph of candidiasis, again, a thrush infection that often affects dry mouth patients. Uh, in patients who are on chemotherapy and immunocompromised, that can be a very serious complication and can, can spread uh, to the rest of the body and can result in death. So it's something that needs to be anticipated and managed early. Uh, on the lower left, we see, again, some mucositis there as a result of the radiation damage and um, exacerbated by trauma from those adjacent teeth. 
And the bond on the bottom right shows the limitation in mouth opening as a result of a condition called trismus, which is um, a progressive problem that if it occurs is very difficult to reverse. So we need to be able to identify the potential for the trismus developing in these patients and take steps early on to get the patients mobilising their jaw and stretching the tissues there to prevent its onset in the first place. And that obviously can have implications in terms of mouth care down the track, which, as we'll see, is vital. And, uh, again, uh, I reassure any patients watching this, does all these things happen to different degrees and some of them don't happen to people. Every patient is different. And why we have multidisciplinary teams in head and neck cancer is because there's someone with expertise in helping us with every one of these things. Having said that, there are people who suffer with trismus difficulty opening their mouth for the rest of their life. There are people who suffer with degrees of dry mouth for the rest of their life. And that's why we're trying to highlight uh, the dental challenges people face, particularly with dry mouth and trismus, and uh, advocate for more help from our health system. Thank you.